Hello folks and welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video. I probably should say ho 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 and welcome to a Christmassy what? Richard Head Longbows video. Well it's kind of Christmas isn't it unfortunately. What? In um, August? Yes in August when we're filming this. Yeah. No it's not August at all. Uh, it's much later than that as well you know viewers at home with a calendar. I'm sure you can work out when this is because yeah. it's being well, uploaded be, pretty much as we're filming it. It'll be my birthday next month. As yes. Well. We're going to do yes. a special if birthday you, edition. I, if you want to, Ooh, yeah. if people want to send in cake, then it's what was it 12th, 12th of November? Or, oh, sorry, what are you 82? Uh, yeah, as old as Hector. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of a, that's so. an in joke, no, no one near as old as Hector. Uh, yeah, because it's Christmas or coming up to Christmas, we thought we'd show you actually some of the range of things that we sell, which you might be interested in putting in your loved one's stocking. Um, but seeing as we're starting... Oh, that starting talk, yeah. No, sorry, it's a bit smutty. But seeing as we're starting with piles, perhaps that is a bit inappropriate to stuff in someone's stocking. stocking. Uh, but we'd like to show you the entire range. It's something we've never done before. Explain a little bit about them, uh, all the various different weights and sizes and what they are and what they do and what you can buy from our catalogue. So where shall we start well, with this myriad Better start with stuff. the smallest one, which Fair are enough. these. Uh, oh, they are quarter tiny. inch diameter, 20 grains, mostly used for clout and flight arrows uh, like this. So you've got a very small light pile. This has got a footing because by the time you've tapered the shaft down to a quarter inch, it's not very strong. Uh, so that's quarter inch, 20 grain. Moving up in size, if you've got a 932nd shaft, you would want 932nd piles. They come in different weights. These are 35 grain. They've got a parallel hole, as did the quarter inch. There's a 50 grain, a little bit heavier. And there is a 63 grain, which is similar to the 5 16th uh, shaft pile, which is a standard. So they're parallel hole. But this is still in that sort of small diameter It's still range, 9 32nd, still, right. yeah. Uh, those are the same, but they have a tapered hole, so you need a taper tool to taper them to fit ah. the shaft. Right, right. So having got the smaller ones out of the way, we then move to a 5 16th. And these are the more the sort of target everyday yeah, sort that's, of... Right. That's right. So a standard target arrow, mainly 63 grain. Again, these have got a parallel hole in them, so you need to reduce the end of the shaft very slightly to fit them. Right. The next one, exactly the same weight, and they look the same, but they've got a tapered hole in them, so use the taper tool to taper them. And we've done um, a video on the tapering yeah. the taper tool, the plastic one particularly, will do the knocks and the piles. Yeah, so if well. people want to do that, they can do yeah. it in both. So that, that one is a, I think it's probably... Is it a 63 or 100? That's a, That's a, a 100. 60, 100, 100. Yes, we'll look, 100 come to that in a second. Yeah. But that pile is one with a tapered hole, so a tapered tool has been used to fit that on, and we've actually pinned that on for extra security. So that's 63 grain. You then go to 100 grain, still 5 16th diameter, 100 grain with the parallel hole. And why have we got these different weights? What's the difference between the 63 and the 100, apart from the actual weight? Apart from the weight. Why, why is there a reason? What's the reason for there being a different weight? Don't ask weight? me that. <laughs> these, <laughs> these are 560, 100 grain, with a taper. <laughs> People will want to know. They will want to know. The, the 100 grain, I mean, I use them for field shooting. It steadies the arrow up a little bit more quickly. If you've got an arrow that you think might be a little bit stiff, a heavier pile has the effect of, of weakening the spine a little bit uh, and you find you do get a steadier flight with them right uh, and if your bow is capable a lot of people will use them for you know 100 yard shooting mm. but if you're struggling because the weight of the bow is that little bit lighter then the 63 grain will give you a little bit of better uh, elevation better sight right. mark but we right. use 100 grain for field shooting it, it steadies the arrow um, particularly at, at closer distances. Right. A lot of it is trial and error, mm. what actually works works for you. Um, but by altering the weight of the pile, it will affect the spine of the arrow shaft. So it can it can be useful for right, that. Right, right. Uh, that's 5 16th. We then go to 11 32nd, bigger diameter. 
The lightest we've got are some 50 grain. They're little stubby ones. Then there is 100 grain, like the 516, but 11 32nd diameter, just bigger. If you've got a heavier bow and you're having to use 11 32nd diameter shaft to get a big heavier spine, right? Then these are obviously going to fit. And the well, 11 32nd is the outside diameter of the shaft. Ah, I was going to say, so when right. you fit them, they're parallel with the shaft, it's right. the outside diameter. So would that go over a 5 16 shaft? It would if go over. If someone was feeling lazy, they just put that it, onto it a 5 could, well, which I've done before. Right. But if you're shooting in British Longbow Society rules, the outside diameter of the pile should not be greater than the diameter of the shaft. It's got to match. So you'd be falling foul of the, right. the rules. Okay. Um, so they're 11 32nd, 100 grain. Same thing with the tapered hole. Even heavier, 125 grain. That will steady the arrow up much more quickly, but that extra weight can, could slow it down. Parallel hole. And finally, the 1132nd with the taper fit. Right. So that's the, that's the range of the brass, the normal normal brass. We've got Pretty some... well. We haven't quite finished. Ah, OK. We what have we got now? We have finished. We've got now... Are you still awake at we're home, still, everybody? <laughs> we're still on the bike. <laughs> they all look the same, don't they? Really? They do, really. Good job we've written on them what the <laughs> hell they are. Ben. OK, these are 5 6 di diameter, 5 16th diameter. They are 80 grains, so somewhere between the 63 ah, and the 100. Just to confuse but everyone. these have got a thread in them. They're a tapered hole. So you taper the end of the shaft with your taper tool and then you screw them on. Uh -huh. Now, you can screw them on without using glue, but we use some glue. Mm. So you can screw them on, a pair of pliers, they really go on. You can't pull them off. Uh, the advantage with that, two-part epoxy glues now aren't as good as they used to be. Mm. They've it taken this, some of the chemicals changed out. the ingredients. Changed yeah. the formula. It don't, doesn't work quite as well. Mm. But these do grip and you don't need to pin them and we've again i think we've done a video showing those have, you yeah, can use yeah. them field shoot in emergencies just taper the end of a shaft yeah. that the pile's broken off screw one of these on and you're good to go so that's an 80 grain they do the same thing 5 16 100 grain and for those people wanting 11 30 second for the 11 30 second 100 grain all with that screw thread in it well if you haven't all fallen asleep We'll move on to some of the other arrowheads oh, that we no. do, which is the steel. The steel ones. The steel right. ones. We shall move on to that right now. Right, we've got all the steel ones together now, so what have we got here? Well, starting with the smallest again, yes. we've got what we call a medhead. What is a medhead? It's like a, a modern version of a medieval bodkin. Smooth face, so it will stick in a target without damaging ah, it. So it's not going to rip them up. It's not going to do that. We call them med heads. The manufacturer um, calls them modkins, ah, but it. they're the yeah. same. They're the same thing. Right. So those for small shafts, nine thirty second, sixty three grain. Uh, there's the same thing, nine thirty second, hundred grain. Uh, and then you get up to the larger shaft size, a five sixteenth, sixty three grain. A 5 16th, 100 grain, slightly bigger, slightly heavier. Going up again, 11 32nd, 100 grain. A bit like the generation game, we're going to test you later 11... on. Make sure you remember every single one of them. Look, these. I can't remember them, no, unless it was written on the pack. <laughs> these are 11 32nd, 125 grain. Um, we also do, which is very similar shape, a half inch version now these are for people with big heavy war bows and want a decent size head to go on a half inch shaft so we've had those produced specifically for us mm. uh, so they're that's, an exclusive that's, item they are so that's that um, also steel if you're field shooting uh, the traditional field pile with that sort of og shape point on it um, we've had these slightly elongated. They stick into 3D foam targets ah. a lot better than the slightly blunt, more blunt ones that were originally. These uh, are a bit more pointy. Yeah, they got a lot slightly longer point, so they they stick in a 3D better. Uh, five sixteenth, hundred grain. Uh, there's a eleven thirty second, 
125 grain and there's also a 5 16 with a screw thread in it similar to the brass ones but these have got a, a, a screw thread so you can screw them on to the shaft helps hold them on and the 11 32nd have got a screw thread. I mean those are the ones we were talking well. about that are very useful for your outfield shooting it is one of those times particularly when you're talking about things like 3ds which do, t do tend to hug the uh, the arrow and the pile quite well they can often come off from the target carrying a bag of those around means you can potentially just screw without even necessarily having any glue yeah, on you you, you miss, can just screw them on and right. away you go if you miss so, the target hit a stone in the ground pick the arrow no, no pile mm. if you've got a plastic taper tool taper the end mm. screw one of those on you you're can, not waiting you, for glue yeah, you're not you're or, not running out yeah. of arrows before the end of the shoot mm. And I'm sure we've all been to field shoots where you've broken so many arrows, it's mm. getting worrying. You might not have enough to get round. <laughs> not going to get to the end. So that, that's the field one. So we've got 5 16 100 grain in the normal taper fit. Yep. And the same with a screw thread. What else we got? Uh, we've got what we called a Victorian style of pile. Um, very sharp point. Again, quite good for 3Ds. They, they really mm. do stick in them. Uh, those are 5 16 diameter. Uh, there's an 11 32nd version. And there's a big 3 8 version, again for people mainly involved in medieval uh, reenactment and medieval shooting that have got a 3 8 shaft. And these are similar to a medieval practice mm, head. A sort of target, medieval yeah. target head. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're, they are quite good. We're talking of medieval stuff. We've got some other medieval. We have, heads. apart from that large one, that's a half inch one, similar to a sort of Tudor bodkin or a bodkin type, mm. uh, a tapered uh, socket, and they are uh, quite popular. Yeah. There's a slightly smaller version, slightly different shape. That's a 3 8 and it's got that four flat sided point to it. Not ideal for shooting into straw targets, no, but for many people who want something looking a bit more medieval part, without really. having yeah. to pay the cost of a hand forged item, yeah. they, they are good. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. only other steel one we've got is again a 3 8 and if you wanted uh, something that would just stick into a target without any problem at all, they're a bullet shape, but they fit a 3 8 shaft. Right, right. Is that it? I think so. Oh, we've got some silver, solid silver heads, but oh, really? um, we won't go into that. No, you might not. Or the gold ones. Solid silver or gold. No, there won't be mahogany <laughs> teak. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's it, I'm afraid. There we are. Well, that's, that's they a are. lot. That's the complete range, certainly of things that we would consider as target heads. Um, obviously, we do do the sorts of medieval type heads, which some of these ones were based on. The actual hand forged ones made by Hector Cole were also part of our catalogue. But the actual sort of machine made heads that are mainly used in target shooting and field shooting, that's the complete range that we do. Mm. We hope we, you, you found that useful. Um, we've uh, just about managed to get through it, with, with remembering everything. Uh, but as Richard said, with a little help with the pen <laughs> mark written. So when you do order something from us, it will have written on it what you're actually buying. Because I know a lot of you out there will buy stuff, great intentions of making arrows, and you've, uh, you've put the stuff aside for two months, and Christmas has come and gone, and you've got no idea what it was that exactly. you bought, because there is quite a range. Uh, as I say, yeah, I hope you find that useful. Uh, yeah, if you want to buy something like that for your loved one to put in their stocking, then I shall put the link below in the description box where you can find our complete range. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Great.